Good evening everyone and welcome to Gundam News. And the headlight for this week is of course that the second season from Witch from Mercury has begun. Meaning that Suleta Sundays are back. But I won't be saying too much about the first episode now, just in case you haven't had the chance to watch it yet or maybe you forgot about it. Um, what I will say is that some things went as I expected, but other things I really didn't see coming, like the transfer students. But anyways, um, coinciding with that second season, they've also launched the Witch from Mercury support project on Twitter. Uh, you can check out the works with this hashtag, which I will also have linked down below. And they also released a page with the rules and assets that you can use to join in on the fun. But believe it or not, the actual web page is region locked. And it didn't even tell me that it was region locked. It just gave me a 404 error. So... At first I thought the page was just dead, but people were still posting on Twitter with the hashtag and I didn't see anything about a dead page, so I figured, you know what, I'll just spin up NordVPN, change my locale to Japanese and see if that works. And by wonder, it did actually work. So if you also need some pesky region logs dodged or you just want some extra security online, you can use my code KKRT or the link down below to get NordVPN. And not only will you be getting a sweet discount, but you'll also be supporting the channel. Which you can also do through Hobbling Japan's Spring Cleaning Sale. Discounts go up to 80% and there's 10% off all shipping methods. And what I'll also have linked down below is the link to pre-order the Mochi Mochi mascots of Witch from Mercury. For 7,920 yen, 60 US, you'll get a plush Suleta, Mirine, Guel, Elan, Shadik, Nika, Choo Choo, Sophie, and Norea. And if you get them through P Bandai, you'll also get an Ariel. It's not a Gundam, it's a guinea pig. Continuing with the less cuddly figures, then, we have the Metal Robot Spirits Tall Geese 2. A beast of a mobile suit that's also getting a beast of a figure for 18,150 yen, around 140-150 US. The design of the tall geese is known for being basic and utilitarian, but they were able to put some cool gimmicks into it, like opening thrusters, a very articulated shield, the ability to remove the face mask, and even a recoil system for the Dober gun. Other accessories include two beam sabers, a beam effect for the Altran Gundam to replicate the final moments, and of course a variety of hands to replicate famous scenes like Trace leading his troops into battle. Pre-orders start on the 14th on Japanese P Bandai and it is currently slated for a September release. A slightly cheaper figure then is the Robot Spirits Zaku 2 Gunner version anime. Pre-orders over at P Bandai started on the 7th, and for 9,350 yen, 70 US, this thing can be flying your way in October. And while that might not be a small price to pay, you are getting a very interesting looking Zaku that comes with two Stormfausts, one leg mounted missile launcher, a shield, and the business end of the giant XAML cannon. Although to deploy it, you will need to combine it with the Zaku 2 F2 rangefinder. And what got announced just today is the Robot Spirits Saigu version anime. Pre-orders for this lean mean killing machine will start tomorrow and it can be yours for 7,920 yen, 60 US. And for that price, it'll come with its iconic Gatling gun with firing effect part, heavy assault machine gun, also with firing effect part, heavy blade, two thruster effect parts, and a variety of hands. Now, if only we could get a master grade or a revive high grade of this thing. That would be awesome. And we're getting more Gundam Seed figures from Ichiban Kuji in late August. As a quick reminder, 
Ichiban Kuji is a lottery style thingy where you buy a ticket for 850 yen, 6 US, which then tells you which prize you've won. And the A prize, or the main prize, is this Freedom Gundam bust, which looks really good. The other prizes haven't been shown yet, but they did tell us what they're going to be. Uh, B is a Kira and Atheron acrylic stand, C is a Lacus and Kigali acrylic stand, D is a clear bottle, E is a visual mat, F is a microfiber cloth, and F is a standard acrylic stand. Meanwhile, on the Gumpla front then, we're not getting anything new new, but we are getting a new Gundam base exclusive item. The high grade 144 scale The Gundam Base Limited Zeta Gundam UC0088 slash Yakushiki slash Gundam Mark II Ayuk set Griffios War Special Color. And judging by the promotional images, I would say that it is kind of a mixed bag. The Yakushiki is looking amazing. The design of the high grade revive was already top notch and with it getting an actual golden finish, it's really just a cherry on top. Uh, combine that with a triple action base and water slide decals, and this set should be an easy home run. But then we get to the Mark II and the Zeta Gundam. In the original Griffios War set, they simply decided to change the colors a bit, and they looked fantastic. Here, however, they went with special colors, making the silver of the Mark II and the white of the Zeta Gundam look extremely cheap, in my opinion. This set will be releasing on the 22nd and can be yours for 9,900 yen, 74 US. And also releasing on that day is the Gundam Base Limited High Grade Universal Century Emblem Set Number 1, which can be yours for 550 yen for US. And then finally, the Master Grade Galgook High Mobility Type Johnny Raiden Custom got a second round of pre orders on Japanese P Bandai. On the gaming front, then, we're starting with a slightly longer talk about the Gundam Evolution update that dropped right when I started recording last week's Gundam news. We're entering Season 4 called Ballista, and the two big updates are the Dynamis and a new game mode. Which, of course, also means that we're getting a bunch of skins to go along with it. You've got one with markings that remind me of those designer version gun plus of like the second season Gundams from Double O. Um, you've got this rainbow version that you can get with a season pass. And then there's a blue and white version that you can get with the unit pack. Um, and we also got a prototype Gundam skin and Zaku 2 recon type skin. It's always a good day when the prototype Gundam gets some extra love. For the new game mode then, it is called Headquarters. Uh, first, both teams fight for control over a central point, after which the team that got it then gets to try to destroy the generator of the other team's headquarters, hence the name. And we also got a new map where you can play it, the Buried City. And in addition to this, Gundam Evolution is also part of the Witch from Mercury X Gundam game collaboration. Because in order to promote the second season, Witch from Mercury will be popping up in a bunch of different games, Gundam games, in a bunch of different ways. In Gundam Evolution, it is just in the form of portraits and icons, but in SD Gundam Battle Alliance, we'll actually get Suleta and the Ariel as a playable unit. Although more details, like exactly when we'll be getting them will be coming at a later date. Meanwhile, in Gundam Battle Operation 2 then, they got the Witchrom Mercury pose, which you can use when snapping pictures with the Witchrom Mercury promotional material that has popped up at the base camp. And talking about GBO2, they also got the Gundam Unit Zero Blossom, and the Steam tests seem to have been largely a success. Uh, for the ab games then, which from Mercury events will be running in Gundam Royale, Gundam Card Collection, Line Gundam Wars, and UC Engage. 
And in the latter, the Ariel and Soleta will be obtainable starting April 19th as login bonuses. And then finally for the games, voting has begun for the 2023 Japan Game Awards. And three Gundam games are part of the votable lineup. Gundam Evolution, SD Gundam Battle Alliance and Iron Blooded Orphans G. So let's see how well they do. And in other news, we got a new Iron Blooded Orphans MSV unit, the Man Rody Cadelia Custom version 3, which is a heavily armed and armored version of the Man Rody designed by Cadelia herself. Imagine how the series would have gone if she had actually used this thing on the front lines. That would have been one hell of a sight to see. Then we've got some newly drawn art for the Gundam Seed Destiny HD Remastered Complete Blu-ray box. The Gundam Build Fighter soundtrack will be part of the Tokyo Soundtrack Festival on April the 29th. The Bandai Hobby Center's Solar System will start operation in April, which is definitely giving me bad flashbacks to Solomon. And we got the rear view of the gym girl with her ball carrying equipment. We can now see how the balls are stored in there. And I love that the ball has this eye closed. It really gives a lot of extra personality to these little guys. Uh, for the things you could buy this week then, we're immediately moving to this week's reading material. There was the May issue of New Type featuring a special on Witch from Mercury, the May issue of Animage featuring a digest of Witch from Mercury's first season, and the May issue of Animedia featuring a special on Witch from Mercury's second season. And now it's time to have a look at this week's Gundam apparel. Last week there wasn't a lot, and there wasn't even any Bunkode whatsoever, so as per usual, this week is totally going to make up for that. We even got a collaboration with the American brand Roosevelt. We don't have too much information about the collection that they'll be dropping, but what we do know is that you can gear up for battle today at 4 p.m. Eastern Time, which should be shortly after this video goes live, if everything goes okay on my end. And we also know that at the very least, you'll be able to get this shirt. In Japan then, Cosmic kicked things off with pre-orders for Miurine's tights. Um, they're available from regular stores and for 4,180 31 US, they can be yours in June. And as you can see from the promotional images, they're not just advertised as the perfect Murine cosplay, but they're also perfect for everyday use. And, you know, with the quality from Cospa, that is definitely something you can do. I can tell. Um, one day later then, Strig G started sales of two new collections, with one of them giving me a case of the Deja Vu's, the Mobile Suit Gundam Brush Painting Short Sleeve T-Shirt Collection. Like, I immediately recognized these designs because of how awesome and memorable they were. Uh, previously, they were released as long sleeve t-shirts, and now, as the name of the collection implies, you can get them as short sleeve t-shirts for 5,830 at a piece, 44 US. There's a white Gundam shirt, Black Shars Zaku shirt, Burgundy Shars Gelguk shirt, Navy Goof shirt, and Purple Zeong shirt. And the other collection is all about Witch from Mercury, for obvious reasons. For 4,730 35 US, you can get a white Soleta shirt, a light blue Mirina shirt, red Gwell shirt, grey Elan shirt, grey Shadik shirt, and white Ariel Shell Unit shirt. And what I love about these designs is that each character has their like own mobile suit in the design, except for Mirina who comes with a tomato. Then for 9,130 N, 68 US, you can get the Soleta, Mirine and Shell unit design on a hoodie. And for 3,850 N, 29 US, you can get the Soleta and Mirine designs on a bag. And if you just cannot get enough Gundam shirts, then Bankore is here for you. 
because for 3850 and a piece, 29 US, you can get a full color t-shirt of the Awakened Unicorn Gundam, Full Armor Unicorn Gundam, Banshee Norn Final Battle version, Banshee Norn in Unicorn Mode, Neo Zeong, Rosen Zulu, and Ariel Rebuild. All of which are slated for a June release. Which is also when some of the other Bankore Witch from Mercury stuff will be releasing that was announced this week. For 1,100 yen a pop, HUS, there's connectable acrylic stands of Soleta, Mirine, Guel, Elan, and Shadik, and yet more t shirts. For another 3,850 yen a piece, 29 US, um, we've got the Witch from Mercury pair t shirts. Featuring Soleta and Mirine, Soleta and Guel, Soleta and Elan, and Mirine and Shadik. And then for the final pieces of Witch from Mercury apparel, I got another case of Deja Vu. For 22,000 yen, 165 US, there's a long wallet. For 19,800 yen, 148 US, there's a bifold wallet. For 12,100 yen, 91 US, a card case. And for another 12,100 yen, 91 US, a pass case. All items that I could have sworn I'd seen before. And I was half right. Previously, they were released in standard Astacasia colors, and now you can get them in holder colors. Um, but regardless, next up we've got some original Gundam number items, where the design of the thing is based on the model number of the featured mobile suit. For 11,000 yen, 82 US, you can get an RX-78 II or Char Zaku themed coach jacket. And for 7,150 yen, 54 US, you can get a sweatshirt in the same two themes. And I especially like how they did that black and golden RX-78 II sweatshirt. And you can store all this Gundam merchandise in the Gundarm Company's 50 liter folding container, which can be coming your way in August for 7,150 yen, 54 US. And now let's quickly wrap things up with the Gundam polls. A few weeks ago, Gundam.info wanted to know what our favorite scene from the Zeta Gundam A New Translation movies was. And 56.8% voted for Omro and Char's reunion. The only thing that shocks me about that is that that scene didn't get even more votes. Because man, that thing was perfect. The golden light, the animation, the music, and the feels behind it, they all just came together for an incredibly powerful and very memorable scene. Then we have the last scene with 18.4%, Camille and Four meeting with 14.8%, and Henken and his cake with 9.9%. As for the currently ongoing one then, there's a Gundam themed sports park in Japan called uh, Versus Park with G, which is currently celebrating its first anniversary. So Gundam.info wants to know, with which character from Shark's counterattack we would want to go to that sports park. And out of the four characters they selected for the poll, there's only really one I would really want to go there with. Like, Hathaway would probably stab you in the back, Quest would probably be looking for Shark the entire time, and Gune would probably be hell-bent on outperforming Shar the entire time. Leaving Chan as the only really pleasant and fun option. Although, to be fair, while I'm not a huge fan of Gune's personality, I guess going with someone competitive to a sports park would be fun as well, so there's that. Uh, but let me know what you think by commenting down below or voting in the poll, which I will have linked down below as well. And that has been all for this week's Gundam News. As always, a big thank you to the Patreon supporters. I hope everyone watching has a great evening, and I'll see you all next week with more Gundam News.